Today we're going to be making clay spoons and the nice thing about clay spoons is that you really don't need any tools at all to make them. Um, you can just use your hands uh, and I'll show you a couple of finished examples. I tend to like to keep the handles shorter. Uh, the one that I do have that has a long handle I don't use very often although it looks pretty. And this one, this one I use a lot. This one holds about three tablespoons. It's a fun little scoop. So to make a spoon, you're going to need to get just basically a piece of clay that will fit inside the fist of your hand. And let's just squish it down into kind of a, a cylinder shape. We don't have to get too precise about it yet. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start rolling it gently into a coil, but I'm going to keep it in a pretty fat coil. I can already tell that this is going to be a, a spoon that's on the larger side because I've I'm using a lot of clay. If you use less clay, you'll have a smaller spoon. Now I'm going to just take a look at this and I'm going to decide where is my handle going to be. I think I'm going to pull off a little bit of clay. I feel like I have too much. And I'm just going to start rolling down on one side, so not the whole thing, just on one side, and compressing that clay to make the handle. So this end is going to be the handle, and this end is going to be the bowl of the spoon. Now I can, I can see already that it's a little lopsided, it's not very even, so I'm going to take a second and I'm just going to smooth out some of these wrinkles that I'm seeing in the clay. And I'm going to try to balance this clay off because the, the, the more balanced the clay is to start with, the more symmetrical your spoon will be. So let me just spend a little time rolling that. I am applying almost no pressure here whatsoever. I'm just giving the clay a chance to move around a little bit, settle a little bit, and kind of get itself in place. And you can see already that that looks a lot better. So... Again, this is my handle portion, so I'm just going to leave that alone for now. But when I've got this looking, it looks kind of like a baseball bat at this point. I'm going to smooth this end and round it off. Take, take your time smoothing this. Take your time because you want it to look as good as possible before you start turning it into a spoon. So smoothing and getting it as symmetrical as possible. And remember, you're dealing with a three-dimensional object, so you want to pay attention to the front, the sides, the back. At this point, we don't really even know where the front is. Smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. I'm working on the handle a little bit just because, just because I can't help myself. Okay, now I'm ready to start forming the bowl portion of the spoon, so this portion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cradle this in my hand, and I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to use a rocking motion and pressure down to spread out the bowl of the spoon. But I also want to keep the edges from kind of collapsing. I don't want to flatten this out. So that's why I'm using the curve of my hand here, the, the bowl of my hand to make the bowl of the spoon. So I'm going to press down. I'm going to just start applying pressure and notice that I'm rocking. And I want to look at the whole spoon as I'm doing this. So don't just look at one section of it. Look at the whole thing. Notice that I've gotten a little crack here. I'm going to dip my finger. I've got a little jar of water that you can't see, but I've got a little jar of water here. I'm just going to dip my finger in that and rub it on that place that's starting to crack. And actually I'll take that water all the way around the rim because once a crack starts, it's very, very hard to fix it. So let's fix them early before they start to really um, really get big and unwieldy. Okay, so I've done my first pressing and then added a little bit of water to the rim. Now I'm going to go back in. I'm going to take a look at this, evaluate how symmetrical it is and what it looks like, and I'm going to go back in again using the curve of my hand and my thumb to just completely press this as thin as I want it and open up the bowl of this spoon. Now this is going to be a bit deeper. I'm going to add a little more water because I got that cracking again. This is going to be a bit deeper than these sample spoons that I have over here. And then I can just start, if you have a little water on your finger, things slide around really, really easily. 
So just add a little water to your finger and keep working on this. This is looking more like a scoop. If you look at this, it looks more like a scoop than a spoon, and that's okay. I can always use a scoop in the kitchen for sure. And I'm just gonna widen it out a little bit. At this point, you're now you're working on how do you want it to look? So this is where your artistic eye comes into play and you're deciding um, what kind of shape bowl do you want and but there's one thing that you do want to pay attention to is the rim of this bowl so you want it to look good the whole way around and I would suggest taking your time on this adding a little water as necessary but slide that clay around if you've got one thick place and one thin place just take your time moving that clay around so that you have a nice a nice rim on on the bowl of your spoon this is one of the faster projects to come together but um, as always you can spend a lot of time on the refining portion of the clay so clay project so you could spend easily a long a much longer time making this look good than than you did actually making it making the form itself stop every now and then to evaluate your rim to evaluate how symmetrical it is and how it's looking so this could use a little more work but I'm gonna pause right now and I'm going to pay attention to the handle Okay, I have to make myself stop because it's one of those things where once you get started, it's really hard to stop. So I've decorated some of these handles. Um, on this one, I just used a palette knife to make a zigzag pattern. On this one, I used the tip of a Bic pen or a flare pen, and I just pressed it into the pressed it into the clay. Take a look around your desk and see what you have that you could press into your handle to make your handle look interesting. Um, i trying to think what else might look good. I think I will try this pair of pliers. So I'm going to just press this into the clay and it's basically just making lines in my spoon and that's fine. I'm going to make one line there. And then you'll notice that I put holes in all of my spoons. That's because after they're fired and after they're um, glazed, they look really cute with a little piece of um, leather or um, if you wanted to put a, a ribbon through it to, to tie it to a packet of, say, coffee, for example, that would make a really nice gift. So how do I make that hole? I'm just gonna take a paintbrush handle. You could take anything that's round and smooth and on the small side and I'm gonna push it through the handle just like that and pull it out again now it looks really good on this side right but it doesn't look so good on this side on this side it looks like a, a an accident happened so I'm gonna take my finger and very lightly pull the clay back on all sides so I'm pulling it back I'm not pushing it in I want to pull it away from the hole to kind of open up the back of that hole and smooth that out. While I'm looking at the back of the spoon, I can smooth out any, any issues that I see rising here, like a little bit of cracking. So I dipped my finger in water again and added a little water to it. And just smoothing, I'm just, just kind of smoothing against those cracks until they go away because the clay wants to absorb the water that you give it. It, want, it doesn't really want to crack. It's telling you, add water, I'm too dry. All right, so I'm smoothing it all. Then the last thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add my name to it. I'm gonna add my initials to the spoon. I tend to like to use a really sharp pencil for this. So you can um, carve in your initials. So here I'm putting JMS. For Jenny DeMelo Souza, and I'm just gonna tap down anything that got kicked up there just tap it down putting your initials on your work is always a good way to go because um, 
oftentimes there's a lag between when you make something and when it goes into the kiln. And I can't tell you how many times at like the community studio that I would work at, I would forget what I made. Like I'd have no clue. I'd be like, wait, I made that? Oh yeah, I made that. <laughs> and the only way I knew was because I had actually put my initials on it. So do sign your work. And I think this is looking like a really nice little spoon now. It's thin around the edge. I could spend a little more time working on this edge to make it a little more even. But it's thin around the edge, which if you can imagine like scooping it into coffee or scooping it into sugar, you want to have, oops, I just messed that up. You want to have a thin end um, to kind of bite into the um, whatever it is you're scooping. So you can see I kind of pinched a little too hard and moved things around too much. So I'm just going to put that back together again with a little water and a little compression from my fingers. And I'm fixing the edge. And I'm going to keep moving on around. I'm going to let this sit out for a little while. Uh, because right here it's really weak where I just hurt that clay. So I want to give that a I want to give that a chance to firm up a little bit. And I also want to come back to this a little bit later and work on it when it's a little closer to um, to um, leather hard. So right now it's really super plastic. So we want to I'm going to work on it again when it's when it's leather hard. Okay, and that's making a spoon. <laughs>